Hey guys and welcome to the commentated onboard video of the 2019 ETU European Cup in Huelva in Spain. The swim took place in the Atlantic Ocean and as there was a little bit of a breeze um, the water was also pretty choppy I would say and there was also a about a 50 meter walk or run into the water before the swim and after the first of two laps we had to run out of the water for 50 meters run back in for 50 meters and after running in for the second time i think everybody was so smashed that we just fell into the water into the waves like a bunch of dead fish and yeah the pace pretty much slowed down at that point and it was a little bit slower than expect expected because we had a pretty fast swimmer uh, in the field but yeah as i said uh, i think everybody was smashed after after that run uh, in between the two swims so when the pace slowed down the first pack pretty much bunched up and a lot of good runners uh, were able to catch up to the first group or were just on the end of the first group and it was a little bit bigger than I would have liked it to be. I would have preferred the lead pack to be around 8 to 10 guys, because usually if you have that amount of athletes, um, you can work together pretty well. But um, yeah, in the end it was like 22, 23 athletes in the lead pack. And so the working together wasn't that well, it wasn't bad but definitely not the fastest pace ever. As Huelva isn't located directly at the sea, uh, this was a pretty special race because we had the swim uh, in, at a beach resort in Punta Umbria and then we had to ride 20k on the, on the highway into the city of Huelva and then in Huelva we had to ride another 20k in form of four laps. Usually uh, in races we just have the swim right next to the bike course and then we just ride for example eight laps um, of 5k for the total of 40k. So this was a pretty special case here. And on the way into the city, uh, yeah, it was just dead flat um, and we had the tw 23 guys lead pack. And in the beginning, uh, it was more like a bunch of Spaniards in the back of the pack and also some of the Brits uh, still recovering a little bit from the swim. But then uh, maybe after 10K on the highway, uh, more and more people started to work. And yeah, it wasn't perfect, but there was definitely kind of a train going there. And the chase pack, the first chase pack was around uh, 40 to 50 seconds back, I guess. And we opened up the gap to about a minute uh, when we came into the city of Huelva. So here we are, uh, just entering the loop in Huelva. Uh, we're just um, going around that left turn and then we just go through transition and the finish area and now we um, have completed 20k and have to do another 20k around four loops of uh, 5k and the special thing about this race course was that um, the first half was totally dead flat and the second part was really challenging I would say on the one hand there was a lot of cobbles, um, this part here isn't too bad, but in a few seconds we will head uh, into the really bad section. Uh, on the one hand the cobbles were really rough stones, and then on the other hand there was also a lot of potholes uh, in the road of the stones. So just here we're entering the uh, cobbles, and as you can see vibrating, uh, that was really hard to ride over. Um, I actually like it. I mean, I don't like it per se, but I like uh, going really hard um, over such a challenging course and testing the other guys because I know if I uh, go to the front here that everybody in the in the back is suffering. Um, here we even go a little bit uphill over those really rough cobbles and yeah, that definitely hurts everyone and, and nobody can hide in the draft too much. 
I still felt pretty good at that point of the race, so I just decided to um, yeah, really push it over those challenging parts of the course, um, over the cobbles, and then also through the technical sections, because I knew that there was about 23 guys in the group, and yeah, for the last guys in the group that were just hanging on, uh, it just gets more and more tough uh, if you have a if you have a good pace going in the front and around the corners and over the cobbles, uh, the field just strings out, and then they always have to catch back up after the corners or after the cobbles. There was also one rather steep incline uh, in the course, so um, as I'm not the lightest athlete amongst triathletes, I always try to uh, go into the hill first and then yeah, not having to push all the way to the limit and maybe let some guys overtake me so I don't have to go, go up the hill that fast. So when I say uh, going up the hill rather easy for a race, uh, for me that means between 500 and 600 watts for maybe 30 seconds. Obviously the athletes that weigh 10 or maybe 15 kilos less than me uh, probably have to put in 100 or 150 watts less than me. Overall there wasn't going on too much, even, even though the course in Huelva was pretty challenging but the bunch pretty much stayed together and yeah we had I think we had a gap of 45 seconds at the end of the bike course to the next group and that was enough that there was just one guy catching up to myself I had a pretty solid run uh, in that race and ended up being eighth place which was okay I would say I'm not super happy with that but uh, yeah, I can definitely live with that and get a lot of important points for the world ranking. And that's definitely a solid base to work on for the rest of the season. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the onboard video and the uh, new perspective if you haven't seen it yet. And yeah, hopefully we'll see each other next time.